Grumman Aircraft Engineering produced several successful aircraft during World War II, but it is perhaps best remembered for creating one of the U.S. Navy's first jet-powered carrier-based fighters, the F-9F Panther. The Panther was a single-engine straight-winged fighter. During the Korean War, it was used extensively by the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. Equipped with four 20mm cannons and a wide array of air-to-ground weapons, the Grumman F-9F Panther successfully delivered quick air support to American units, surrounded by enemy forces on the Korean Peninsula. From 1949 to 1954, the Panther became the workhorse of the U.S. Air Forces. Besides its close air support effectiveness, the F-9F is credited with engaging in the first jet-on-jet -jet combat and achieving victory by taking down a Soviet MiG-15. It was a legendary aircraft used by legendary men, such as a young 21-year-old Neil Armstrong, the first man to ever land on the moon. Fewer than 1,500 units were produced, and it was only used by the U.S. and the Argentine Navy. The aircraft would be the foundation of the Grumman F-9 Cougar and other American jet fighters of the Cold War. The development of jet-powered aircraft can be traced back in history before the beginning of World War II in Hitler's Germany. Hans Joachim Pabst von Oehn is credited with producing the first jet engine in 1936. It would become the pillar of the first turbojet aircraft built globally, the Hengel HE-178. After the successful invasion of Poland, the Wehrmacht adopted jet engines for producing advanced fighter aircraft. This resulted in the Messerschmitt Me-262, an airplane entirely powered by a jet engine. The Me-262 was faster and more heavily armed than the Allies' only jet airplane, the British Gloucester Meteor. The Messerschmitt entered combat late in the war, and although Hitler thought it would help change the tide of the war, it came too late to the conflict, and the Axis lost. After World War II ended, the U.S. quickly began studying the possibilities of producing its first jet-powered aircraft with the support of German scientists that migrated to the U.S. Jet-powered aircraft became the next step in aerial combat. The U.S. did not want to fall behind in the arms race, especially because increasing tensions with the USSR were slowly leading to a path of armed conflict. Jet fighters were faster and more lethal than piston-powered airplanes. Jet engines drastically increased top speeds, lifted operating ceilings, boosted climb rates, and almost doubled the cruising speeds. The first mature generation of jet aircraft would see combat for the first time during the Korean War, also known as the Forgotten War. Fighter jets were used by both the U.S. and the Soviet Union's allies during the three-year-long conflict. The U.S. Bureau of Aeronautics issued a contract to Douglas for an F-3D-1 Sky Knight prototype and to Grumman for a G-75 prototype in 1946. The competition was conducted to produce a jet-powered night fighter for the U.S. Navy. Although it could be considered distantly related to the Panther, Grumman's G-75 was initially drawn up with four engines. When the Douglas Sky Knight was selected over the G-75, the Navy decided to let Grumman continue developing their prototype, just in case the Sky Knight suffered any malfunctions in testing. In April 1946, the Navy changed the designation of the G-75 to XF-9F-1. Grumman also realized that their prototype was a dead end, and decided to build a new model from the ground up. The Bureau of Aeronautics agreed to the change and did not cancel the contract. Thanks to a creative reinterpretation of the deal, the single-engine Grumman F-9F Panther emerged. The Panther was conceived as a fighter bomber from its new start, to fulfill the Navy's and Marine Corps' demands for a close air support aircraft. 
It was equipped with four 20mm cannons mounted under the nose. It was also capable of carrying bombs and rockets of up to 2,000 pounds on underwing hardpoints and rails. The Panther went through several engine changes after production started. The Allison J-33 and Westinghouse J-34 were the only available American engines in the market in 1947, but they did not have sufficient power for the Panther. The Navy instead specified that the prototype had to be equipped with the imported Rolls-Royce Neen turbojets, which were more potent than the American engines, delivering approximately 5,000 pounds of thrust. As the aircraft's fuselage had insufficient space for the additional fuel that the Neen engine required, mounted wingtip fuel tanks had to be added. This accidentally improved the Panther's rate of roll, thanks to the aerodynamic impact. Grumman test pilot Corky Meyer flew the prototype for the first time in November 1947. The Panther initially suffered from tail hook and aft fuselage problems that were fixed by Grumman with the next variant of the jet. The F9F4 version had a longer fuselage to increase internal fuel capacity and a larger vertical stabilizer for better lateral stability. The engines were also changed with the new powerful Pratt & Whitney J42s. The variant also included pressurized bleed air used to simulate higher speed across the flaps. This modification yielded a 9-knot slower stall speed and a 7-knot slower approach speed. The F9F5 variant was further improved with another 1,000 pounds of thrust when the engine was swapped for the PNW J48 engine. Additionally, anti-stall fences were mounted on the wing roots. All of the Grumman F9F Panthers that saw action in the Korean War wore a gloss dark sea blue coat with white squadron numbers. The cockpits were generally painted interior green with flat black side consoles. The Panther became operational with VF-51 Screaming Eagles in May of 1949. They would become the most used ground attack aircraft of the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps during the Korean War. The first Navy Panther squadrons arrived in Korea before May 1950. These were the VF-51 and VF-52 Knight Riders. The Marines would follow up in December 1950 with the arrival of the BMF-311 Tomcats. The Grumman F9F Panther would perform more than 78,000 sorties during the Forgotten War. F9F2, 3, and 5 variants of the Panther would be used throughout the war. The Panthers would fight alongside the USAF's F86 Sabre Jets, Douglas AD Sky Raiders, and Vought F4U Corsairs. The Navy and Marine Corps Panther pilots performed various mission roles that often involved blowing up high and low-value targets. They gave close air support to pinned Allied troops and escorted the Douglas AD Sky Raiders and Vought F4U Corsairs that dropped heavy ordnance on Korean and Chinese barracks and outposts. On July 3, 1950, Lieutenant Junior Grade Leonard H. Plogg, flying a Panther from the VF-51 Fighter Squadron of the Screaming Eagles, got the first U.S. Navy air combat victory when he took down a Soviet World War II-era Yak-9. The first air-to-air -air registered combat between fighter jets took place on November 8, 1950, during a United Nations command attack on the Sinaju bridges near the Yalu River's mouth. First Lieutenant Russell Brown from the 16th Fighter Squadron encountered a MiG-15 in the area. He scored several hits on the Soviet aircraft during the ferocious dogfight before it disappeared on the horizon. Brown thought he took down the enemy aircraft. Still, decades later, it was discovered that his Soviet opponent returned safely to base, according to Barrett Tillman and Hank van der Lut in their book titled The VF-11-111 Sundowners. The 
the next day. The first confirmed jet-on-jet -jet victory occurred during the same UN offensive. Lieutenant Commander William Bill Amen of the VF-111 Squadron, flying an F-9F-2B, scored the first kill. He took off from the USS Philippine Sea CV-47 aircraft carrier to support the troops engaged at the Sinaju Bridges when Soviet MiG-15s from the 139th Guards Fighter Air Regiment, tasked with protecting the bridges, were ordered to repel the U.S. aircraft. Soviet Captain Mikhail Grachev was tasked with leading the first squadron into combat. When the MiGs intercepted the American escort, they began attacking the Corsair and Skyraider fighter bombers, unleashing a chaotic battle. Commander Amen, leading the combat air patrol in his Grumman F-9F-2B Panther, noticed an enemy target was closing in on him from behind and took evasive maneuvers. He immediately turned his VF-111 section towards the bogey. The Soviet MiG was flown by Captain Grachev himself. After a climb from 4,000 to 15,000 feet, the Soviet captain turned, trying to find the American F-9Fs. During this aggressive maneuver, Ahmed and his wingman, George Holloman, opened fire against the MiG. Both pilots hit Grachev. Desperate, Grachev began a vertical dive that the Americans could not track. After seconds of trying to find their target, Ahmed shot the MiG again as it crossed his sight, pouring more 20mm rounds into the already damaged aircraft. At 3,000 feet, both Grachev and Aman began to pull out of their dives, with the latter being able to recover his Panther at only 200 feet. During this maneuver, Captain Grachev lost control of his aircraft and hit a hillside. A huge fireball was seen by the Americans. The Soviet aviator became the first casualty of jet-on-jet -jet combat. On November 18, 1952, the Grumman F-9F Panthers shone once again under the scale of Naval Reserve Lieutenant Elmer Royce Williams of VF-781 Pacemakers flying an F-9F-5 variant. Lieutenant Williams shot down four MiG-15 fighters in North Korea's port of Horyang. The dogfight took place near the Tumen River, not far from a USSR naval base at Vladivostok. The outstanding achievement remained a secret for more than 40 years because of the NSA's involvement in planning the mission in which Williams was involved. After the conclusion of the Korean War, the Navy continued developing more advanced jet fighters. Many Panthers ended up with Naval Reserve units around the country. Some became drone aircraft to be used as targets for testing new weapons. In 1962, Panthers were retired from the Navy and Marine Corps service. Some were sold to the Argentine Air Force. Several famous Americans of the late 60s are noted to have flown the Panthers, such as future astronauts Neil Armstrong and John Glenn, as well as USMC Captain Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox. In 